Muscle Podcast, talking all that you need to become the best rugby player you can be. Now here are the Rugby Muscle Coaches, TJ and Alex. Yes, boys and girls, it's TJ here, back again with another Rugby Muscle Podcast, and we are joined, as always, by the big man, the guy with a couple teeth missing. Just one. Is it just one? Just one, It's mate. Alex. Just What's going on, Alex? Go. Yeah, I'm good, man. A, a good week this week. Really Excellent. Week. What? What? You mean You mean Monday? This is Today, we're, it's Tuesday. It's Tuesday morning, of course. So you've had a good Monday, right? Yeah. Yeah, good Monday, sure. It, it took, if yeah. you, you've just figured out what I'm trying to go through here. Yeah, I know we do. Welcome. We are live. We are live to you here Tuesday morning on the Rubbing Muscle podcast. Wow, what a weekend of sport we just had. You know, I've I've heard a few people accuse us of pre-recording these, but it's not true. I mean, and I'm <laughs> gonna I'm gonna prove it now by saying what a win that was uh, by Fiji in the USA Sevens. What a win it was by Brian Shaw in the oh, mate, he's Arnold gonna, Classic yeah. World Strongest Man. Um, what a win it was by Stephen Wonderboy Thompson in that in a UFC, and what a win it was by. Uh, uh, actually, no, it wasn't a great win. It was a really boring, boring pay per view boxing fight with um, David Hay. That was really boring. Did you watch any of that stuff that uh, has already happened, Alex? The rugby. I don't. I try not to miss a Fiji match. You know. Right? Big, I saw big a good tweet from uh, Rob Vickerman saying he wishes just that Fiji would stop making sevens rugby look so easy because it's yeah. really not easy. It is a very yeah. difficult sport. Um, but yeah, is, 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 uh, is there anything that you were looking forward to? I mean, anything that you enjoyed watching on this weekend of sport that we just have gone past? Well, I was um, I was looking forward to the UFC interim title fight, but obviously that's not happened. So, oh, it's the, a bit shit. yeah, yeah, I know, cutting weight. Yeah, yeah I mean, the, the, the guy had to go to hospital because yeah. he cut too cut weight well, too because because he was so dehydrated. Yeah, um, yeah, absolute bullshit. That right. could be that could be our next podcast, actually, Alex. For Thursday, we're, we're gonna write write this down. On Thursday, we're gonna talk about. Um, Stupid things that are coming in from MMA that you shouldn't be doing in rugby. That's going to be so you boys listening now get to look forward to that. Or if is if you're doing what I see a lot of people are doing and going back and listening to lots of old episodes because there's lots of nuggets of information, then guess what? Uh, skip forward to the next one. Not now, but when you finished, the next episode is a very good one to listen to, and it's about MMA mistakes. How about I've that? Got a, I got some good uh, good stories about cutting weight for MMA. Yeah, mm-hmm. I thought. Yeah, I think we've both trained fighters. I've trained a couple BJJ guys, and it's not, yeah. and a couple wrestlers, and actually a couple uh, lightweight rowers. Oh yeah. Yeah, and they've but the weight cutting process for those boys are completely different to yours, or to <laughs> to what you see in MMA and, and boxing these it's, days. It's, it's bonkers. Anyway, anyway, let's not, let's not get distracted by that now. Maybe. Maybe. It's time for the Facts of the Week. Alex. Yes, boy. This is, what, this is your time to shine, mate. It's the Fact of the Week. Oh, what, what you said you were going to do this week? No. Okay. okay, cool. So, during the week, I um, I sent you a message about UPS. It, last week, it. last week you sent me this message, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Are we really going to do that for the whole episode? Car- carry on. Yeah, so last week you sent me a message... <laughs> Uh, to do with UPS and how um, UPS fans try to never make a left turn. They never make a so left turn. Say they want to. Yeah. But that. that sorry. So this isn't. This U- is in the states, right? So if you're a UPS drive, if you're UPS in the UK and you're driving on the left-hand side, you would always make left turns, right? Uh, I assume so. Yep. What do you mean you assume? This is the fact of the week. I want these things n- nailed down and Yeah, proven. I don't like absolutes. Anyway. Good at that. Anyway, anywho. Yeah, but never mind that, because um, essentially, when you look at the efficiency of something, the 
it would make more sense to go through a direct route, but taking into account injuries and traffic accidents and whatnot that increase so sharply when you take a right or a left turn, turn. Um, it actually works out to be more efficient and safer to always turn. Yeah, or as in your Derek Zoolander and you're like a uni turner. So what you're saying is like, so if I'm if I'm in England, right, and I drive on the left hand side of the road. Yeah. Actually, no. Let's 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 stick to this. You boys that are listening to this in the UK, just for imagine, pretend you're playing Grand Theft Auto because you, you're driving on the right hand side of the road, or just imagine you're in you're in Europe or whatever. You're driving on the right hand side, right? It would be mm-hmm. easier for you to take one, two, three, three right hand turns rather than take one left hand turn. Is that is this what you're arguing that UPS drivers do? We're saying we're not saying it's easier. We're saying it's more efficient. And safer, it's more efficient because of the safety. Oh. Plus, as well, in the US, you can make a right hand turn on a red light. Yeah. So, I mean, that probably helps as well. That is, uh, so they so they rarely make, and that's why, so they don't get into accidents is more the thing than yeah, anything else. Yeah, it's a safety issue there, essentially. So, I guess because even if it's like 0.1%, that's probably like a driver every day. Well, mate, it's, it's like a 30% increase. It's something ridiculous. It's, it's a really, really big... Let me see if I can find a percentage now. Yes? Yeah. It's, it's a really big deal, yeah. Okay, we're not going to do any more. That was Alex's fact of the week, and i tell you anyway, what. Anyway, that's that. Yeah. Mm. Are we going to give you that? It's 90%, 90%. Wow, that's an interesting fact. 90% of what? 90% of the turns that UPS drivers make are um, right-hand turns. Interesting. Interesting indeed. All right, Alex, let's get on. Let's not sit on the couch Holy here. Shit. And sit I'm going to do one more, one more little fact, mate. Here, according to the uh, the stats, 53.1% of traffic, traffic crossing accidents occur on left-hand turns. So going against that makes sense. That's a... Wait, that 3% is a big deal, right? What was that? Why? Compared to, so it's fifty-three percent on left-hand turns, five point seven percent on right-hand turns. Yeah, That's that makes sense. Huge. Uh, it makes sense indeed. Um, anyway, so yeah, everyone stop making right-hand turns, I guess. Or left-hand turns if you're listening in the UK, because it's confusing. Because we're talking about things that happen in America, whereas the majority of our listeners are UK-based. Not to mention. Like, not to forget everyone else on all those countries I mentioned on that podcast the other the other day. But oh, still. shout out to uh, our lad Tommy. He's um, coming to Houston to play. Yeah, all right, Tommy, well. mate. Shout out to you. Pretty cool. Yeah, it is cool. All right, let's yeah. move on. Let's actually get to talking about something to do with rugby and something to do with muscles, shall we? Uh, we have to. All right, so this is coming from a question that we were asked, but I'm going to have to quickly find it now because I completely forgot that the reason I brought this topic up was because we have a question. Uh, it should be here. Yeah, here we go. So Wayne Dawson, again, we've already answered one of his questions on the podcast. We're going to answer another one. Mm-hmm. He said, uh, thanks for asking my last question. I hope that he's used this as an abbreviation. He says quesi instead of question. And I'm hoping that's just an abbreviation instead of just saying question, because I enjoy that. But yeah, thanks for answering my last quesi with a full podcast. I have another one for you. Just took over fitness for an over-35 rugby team, the Navy Mariners. Uh, How would you change their routine? I have to take into consideration not as flexible, and some have never done Olympic lifting, and some are stuck in their own ways. So... I'm obviously going to completely just take this question and sort of manipulate it and turn it into the question I want to ask or slash uh, the question I want to answer slash be answered on this podcast. And that is training considerations for different ages. Uh, Alex, do you want to give us a brief... This is, yes. this is your time where you give that little brief overview and say, oh, this is where we do this. So, so do that now, please. Well, what, what, what I'm going to do first is... Just clear up one thing you mentioned. He mentioned that some of them are stuck in their own ways. I thought he was going to uh, mention that you're going to bring up quesies, but all right, yeah, stuck in their own ways. I don't know what quesi is. Um, is that like a quesadilla? Because I'm all about quesadillas. No. Um, that's a shame. Okay, when there are people are stuck in their own ways, it's just a case of educating them. Like they need to realise that they're 
there could be better ways of doing things. But it's just a case of like just getting on them and explaining why. Like most people, every every podcast we're going to probably bring up the fact that so many people get them. results in spite of the sh- stuff that they do, not necessarily yeah. because yeah, yeah. of. Which is another BJJ thing we need to talk about. Yeah. Anyways. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, don't worry ahead. about like trying to force them to do something. Just just educate them and let them know that they'll probably be better off doing it a better way. And here's it's what, what here's what often happens as well because I you know I've trained a lot of and I'm sure you have any any personal trainer because we get a lot of personal trainers. Listen, you know you've you've probably trained a number of people that are stubborn as shit and they're like, no, your method, this method won't work, and I've done this before and this worked. And all you have to do is train the ones that do listen. They get better results. The ones that aren't listening are like, oh, I mean, maybe I will give this. And eventually they will bow to your knowledge. Literally. Right? Yeah, I didn't get a lot of that, actually, but I'm, uh, I can totally imagine it. Yeah, you get a lot. There's a lot of stubborn people in the world. Uh, I, I, I mean, this is from when I used to actually train people physically, and you get a lot of them. And then, yeah, you, you know, all you can do is educate them all and... The ones that do listen are going to make great results and the rest are just going to follow the lead. That's how it's done. Yep. Unless you don't enjoy it, then you can follow them because fuck those guys. Okay. Um, training training um, considerations for age. So the importance of uh, different physical attributes changes with age. So we can, we can say that rugby is a power sport, right? And once you get over a certain age, you're power output decreases by whatever percentage every year, unless you maintain it. So it means that power training becomes a high priority, but yeah. you're going to lose it anyway, right? Right. Um, also, that flexibility and mobility, and I guess stability does decrease with age as well, or, or decreases with without practice, I guess, would be a better way of looking at it. Mm-hmm. So the priority of actually moving, Mm-hmm. And moving well increases. So we're looking at here. So whereas things uh, that this is this is our first little uh, I guess subtitle slash section. We're talking about uh, things that uh, as you get older result in you not playing rugby as well. Yeah, yeah. you're le- you're yeah. naturally less explosive as you get older. That's why you see um, a lot of like field sport athletes or or track athletes like people that are involved in real explosive sports. Rarely do they keep their explosivity until, or even just even when you can look and you can see rugby players as they get older, they they don't have the physicality as much as they get older, and they have to replace that with tactical knowledge. But we're yeah, trying sure. to keep your physicality. We're trying to keep the explosiveness. Um, we're trying to keep that in check. Basically, we're trying to we're trying to yeah. keep that. It's, it's not it's not that you can't maintain it, or it's not that you can't improve it with age. Is this something you need to keep working on? Yes, it's so it's, it, a, it, it's a it, physical, it's a characteristic that will drop if you don't constantly do it. Whereas a, a younger athlete, you could train power, you know, for a few months out of the year and then not even do any of it for the rest of the year, and you sh- you'll keep most of that power. Um, same thing with speed. I think speed has to be trained a lot, way more often if you're an elderly athlete. Elderly, meaning above twenty eight. Yeah, absolutely. I mean. You- you gotta look at that, and then yeah, motherfuckers, so old now. Um, um, carry on. I think you you cut out for shit. a sec there. Yeah, it's been in and out a little bit. Um, okay, so, so also what we've got to consider for um, as you age, we've got to consider mm-hmm. your ability to handle training volume. Okay, recovery is huge. Yeah. Uh, so there's two things at play here and they're almost opposites because as you're a younger trainer or as yeah as you're a younger athlete you you need less stimulus in order to get a good response meaning you could just go in and do yep. a few heavy sets of uh, a lower body push a lower body pull an upper body push and an upper body pull and you would get great results and you know for your good first few years of training you wouldn't need to do much more than that right yeah, but as you get older, you need to this that you, you're not going to get as much results from that. You need to start adding stuff in. You need to start getting a bit more technical, uh, adding a lot more training volume. This is why we wouldn't recommend people that have never trained before do much more than that. 
but people have been training for a while, they need to do a lot more. They need to do, you know, that's why we look at body part splits or training six days a week, higher volume, lots of lots of sets, lots of reps, because you need to try and you're really starting to scrape that barrel once you're past your first, say, five years of training. Everything you're doing after that is pretty much trying to scrape the barrel to get as much results as you possibly can, right? Mm-hmm. Absolutely, mate. Absolutely. But, like, oh, go, on, yeah, carry on. go for your bit. No, no, I'll just reiterate what you said. Keep going, mate. Okay. But then the the problem where this becomes like really technical is you look at it then from the opposite side and as you get older, uh, you can sort of tolerate it, but once you like once you're, you're scraping the barrel, once you get past about what would you say if you get into your thirties and with this email I was talking about people that are over thirty five, you start to handle less and less as well. Especially this is especially if you're playing rugby at the same time, it becomes yeah. much harder to recover. So now we've got this uh, this yin and yang where we need to train quite frequent in order to get a good amount of results and we need you know uh we need to hit, keep hit covering all of our bases and scraping that barrel but at the same time we're in a bill we're in a stage in our life where recovery becomes much harder much more difficult whereas a a 20 year old could just go home eat a pizza sit down on the couch and that would be enough recovery for them Um, and again, that comes back to a, a trainability. Like recovery is a trained ability. So if you, even though it is going to drop off, if you keep training from younger to older, you'll see less of a drop off. Hmm. Um. So, let's look at another part of the question. He said, um, in terms of training considerations for age. Oh, I've just gone off the email. No, here we got it back. He said, uh, some have never done Olympic lifting. I would say. Don't bother doing any Olympic lifting then. We've said this before. Yeah, okay. um, yeah so there's no need for people at that age to learn, and, and unless they want to, they really want to take up Olympic lifting as a sport, which is fine. Do that, but the, at the minute they're doing rugby as a sport, so they don't need to do Olympic lifting as a sport. So they don't need to do the Olympic lifts. It's as simple as that. Uh, they can get their stimulus with just jumps and just a few power movements. I can keep the volume really low on this. Uh, I don't know if you agree with me, Alex, here, but the volume should be no more, never more than like three sets total of power work because it's, it is really taxing the CNS. And, and also the less sets that we do in one session, the more often we get to do it. So the more we can actually work on improving it rather than just trying to keep it the same. Where were you? Yeah, I'd, um, I'd even go a bit deeper in that. And um, I'd say, depending on how old they are, it depends on what type of jumps they do. Yeah, and what type of uh, power work they do, because it might be that you have some guys where landing becomes inappropriate. Mm-hmm. This is I was going to so go into this be- in when we're looking at the flexibility, so we can we can bring this in. Okay, yeah, and um, it might be that so I was thinking. Okay, no one lifts, but let's look at what else um, gives a huge power response. Something like a hex bar jump, or um, even like a clean pull. Mm-hmm. But that hex bar jump turns into quite a high absorption of load when you land. Yeah, so that's, maybe that's also a hex bar kind of weighted land. So they've got to be able to have the mechanics in order to land that. Um, and if, as he says, they're not really flexible, that's going to be mm-hmm. difficult because if they haven't got the flexibility, they might not have the mobility, they might have poor movement. If they've got poor movement and they're trying to land with you know 80 kilos whilst they've jumped as high as they can, we're looking at a bit more potential for injury for these guys, right? I mean, I just I just maybe even avoid jumps and, like, like I said, abandoned training. Mm-hmm. The, the longer you can um, have an acceleration phase and the shorter you can make the deceleration phase, the more power you're going to produce. Yeah. Um, so if, what was it, is this Dwayne, right? Uh, Wayne. Wayne, sorry. Um, that's too much time in Texas, that's what that is. Um, if Wayne has a look at um, some of the stuff that Louis Simmons put out on um, increasing the acceleration phase and decreasing the deceleration phase, that, that might have a few ideas for him in there. Why don't, you, why don't you put it out rather than Louis Simmons? Just tell me, just give us a cliff notes of that. Okay, so we, we look at 
the, the band of the chain work and we and we maybe you use depending how he's gonna program it, like sixty percent bar weight, forty percent band weight. Okay. And the band bought enough to keep accelerating for longer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we can set it so we can try and jump, but if we don't actually leave the floor because the band weight is so high. We've still got that acceleration gone in. Still have we still have the acceleration and, and the newer output we would have from a jump ish, yeah. but without that the impact coming down again. Um, this is, plus this it, brings up quite a good point of um, band training and cha- people with chains, and it's not just a gimmick to be used for, shit, for shits and giggles and whatnot. It's it's a good tool to use if you've got a specific goal in mind. So, as Alex says, yeah, I wouldn't have more than sixty percent bar weight compared to the chain because we're working that acceleration. Too many people do like they put eighty percent of their one rep max squat on and then they add some chains on just for, for the sake of it and they don't really know what they're doing um, this, this point, is the sake of all training is that you look at what you want your outcomes for that session to be if you're trying to work into a super maximal range where you're trying to like almost overreach yeah. then yeah like put put some chains on so when you're at the top of a squat you're over your max weight if that makes sense but if you're working on acceleration, make sure you're accelerating. If you're working on speed strength, make sure it's speed strength. I like don't. Yeah. But don't just ego lift for the sake of it. Yeah, cool. Um, and then, um, so, so one more thing to add into the power training slash like lack of flexibility is with that band work is I do a lot of, uh, well, I was going to say sled drags where you don't need a band for that, but, you know, or res- manual resisted drags and pulls and stuff like that. So, if you're doing heavy sled pushes or or you've got a band around your waist, you've got someone holding you back and you're just trying to stride out as far as you can, that's going to give us a good bang for our buck because that's going to give us just only eccentric work. Yeah. Sorry, only uh, concentric work. Mm-hmm. And, which means that it's going to be easier for recovery, which means basically we're not lowering a weight. We're just going up, 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 up if you're doing pushes and, and pulls and whatnot. Uh, with a sled or a person, which means it's going to be easy to recover from, number one, that's a good thing. Number two, it's going to be heavy, so you're going to get that power, well, it can be as heavy as you need to either get the power or the strength benefit or whatever benefit you're looking for. That's number two. And then number three, we're also looking at, if we're doing this, then we're going to have that positive shin angle, that positive body angle, we're going to learn good mechanics in order to sprint better without having to do anything too technical we're just going to load up a, a, a sled and push it as he- push it as hard as we can yeah for sure um in terms of actual conditioning work with them what are you thinking there uh i am still thinking aerobic is going to be the main base um one thing i do want to cover here actually is with this question he says that a lot of because they're not uh, flexible and they're, not, they're you know they're stuck in their ways yada yada yada. Um, this implies that they've stopped training at some point. Um, this is the last point I really wanted to make on this, is that because uh, if you if you carry on training from when if when you start, say you're 18, you, you listen to this, you're going to mm-hmm. start training. A lot of people just give up like once they hit their 30 once they hit, once they get past their physical peak and that's when all this like uh lack of ability comes in you know you start losing your mobility you start losing strength you start losing your gains and you just end up being a fat slob sat on the couch watching uh watching the bachelor or pop idol or something you know with a family and you're moaning and you're like oh I don't know where it all went wrong the key is is as you start like as you see training as a journey and never stop and by that means you there's a good chance that you'll never lose a lot of these physical characteristics there's no reason to say you have to stop doing all this stuff unless you've picked up like some sort of injuries that hold you back from something but that doesn't mean there's never a workaround right yeah i mean look at the safety bars Mm -hmm. oh jeez that's so loud is it um yeah it's fucking loud isn't it man fantastic Excellent. I hope I burnt your ears. Not you, the listener. Not you. Just Alex. Um, but what I, I guess to round this off, where but apart from just that one deep physical point or physical, I mean 
philosophical point to carry on training throughout your life is um, if you are in that stage and you don't have mobility, etc. There's we've said it before. There's no need to say that you have to do an Olympic lift. You, there's no need to say you have to do a barbell back squat because that's an awkward position as well. There's no need to say you have to do uh, a barbell bench press. We can do like. You can still, if your if your goal, especially if your goal isn't concerned with rugby anymore, if it's just about getting jacked and and getting in good shape, machines are going to be your your uh, help because you you're just going to be able to train the muscles a little bit easier, and you're going to recover from machines easier than you would have done with like a heavy back squat if you'd just done a, a bunch of leg presses. But I would say that you've got to make sure that you're not moving yeah, I mean, the range of motion that oh, your body sure. can't hit, right? Yeah, and on that note, mm-hmm. like, these guys don't need to be able to do like a super deep overhead squat. Yeah, you know, they just need to be able to play rugby without getting broken. Oh, good point. We'll do another. We'll so, do my bullet podcast soon because that's always been my point. Is like when in rugby, have you seen anyone that needs to do the splits? You don't. You you need to do. You need to be as flexible and as mobile in order to play your sport well. No more. Yeah. Beautiful. So, we happy. We good. Any last, uh, any last things on that, mate? Nah, we're all good, I think. Heading over to tjshrink.com uh, to check out. I've written, I'm, I'm writing a blog again, Alex, and it's just a, it's basically just a rant. But I want, I want to have a, have a blog where I can rant because I like, I like informing people f- through videos and through the podcast. But the blog is my rants because um, I don't rant enough uh, with all this uh, <laughs> high blood pressure and shit, and I need to get rid of it uh, and follow the people on the show that's collision underscore and underscore combat on what was it on insta and facebook yeah, yeah. sweet and tj.strength if you haven't got your 50 plus free conditioning sessions uh for free go ahead and go to rugby muscle.com pick up all of that and if you would be so kind as to go on itunes and give us a five star review it would really help us out and we love you so much. Thanks for listening to the podcast, boys, and we'll see you soon.